We're in a season of calamities. Bad things happening all over the place. And God knows everything that is going on. He's not on a coffee break. He's not taking a nap. But I'm going to share with you this. The calamities are a necessary evil for God to carry out his judgment, his mercy. Believe it or not, some of his mercy is coming through some of these calamities. Because God is taking care of his people. He's taking care of his people. And they're not going to linger and, 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 and hang around and suffer and go through all. No. No. God, there are some people that God has counted worthy to escape what's coming. And those people, you're going to start seeing a lot of God's people going to be with the Lord. And this is the part, okay, thank you, Lord. This is the part where some of you are going to have a very difficult time dealing with God in this. Because you see God is loving. God is kind. God is love. God is mercy. God is tender. God is long-suffering. God is patient. God is kind, right? All the things we describe as love because God is love. But God is wise. God is sovereign. He knows what he's doing. Even when you and I don't have a clue, what the heck is going on with that? So listen, let's go to, I'm feeling to go, to John. Now we're dealing with John, John the Baptist. John the Baptist is in prison. He hears that Jesus is all over the place, healing, raising folks, uh, blessing folks, touching folks, folks 17. When through the way you want him to come through, do you know who he is? John sent his messengers to find out and ask Jesus when he heard all the miracles he was doing. Are you him or should we look for another? Now, what I want to say to that is many of God's people going through these calamities in this season are going to start questioning God. You got to be careful. It's okay to ask God questions. That's not a problem. But some of you are going to be offended in God because you're angry because he took your loved one home. We know it. That was not John not knowing who Jesus was. You know how I know? Because of Jesus' response. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to read it. And John calling unto him, two of his disciples sent them to Jesus saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? Are you him? Are you really him? Or should I be looking for another? Verse 20. When the men will come unto him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us with thee, saying, Say it, sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answered, said unto them. Now you know what I noticed? He didn't answer them right away. They asked him a question. He acknowledged it and went on healing. And when he got through, this was his answer. Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and de the deaf ear, the dead are raised to the poor, the gospel is preached. And blessed, here it is right here, blessed is he 
whosoever shall not be offended in me. God's people are going to have to pray hard. There are going to be some folks dying. It's going to make you wonder, is there a God at all? Because, see, the Bible says not everybody's going to experience certain things about God. So those that have had the fewest experiences will have the biggest questions. Is there a God at all? Like, like uh, the song, He is Able, there's a verse in there that says, questions seem to haunt us night and day. How can God allow my heart to be torn this way? Does he listen when I call? Is he even there at all? Yet I know when my heart fails to see, he is able. And even though it seems impossible to me, he is able. And if he chooses not to move in the way we pray he would, I'm confident he's working all together for my good. I will stand behind his word. For he is able. See, you have to have a, a, a steadfast, unmovable, unshakable faith in God's love. In God doing what's best for his people. Yes, many of you will lose family members. Many of you will lose loved ones, friends spouses, children even. But it doesn't mean that God can't answer prayer. That may be his answer to your prayer. No longer do I want them here in this mess. I'm taking them to be with me. And if you ask them once they're on the other side, if they want to come back to you, they'll look at you cockeyed and say, you must be out your mind. Do you see what I see? No way do I want to come back to this. That's like asking somebody if they want to come back from this beautiful paradise and this beautiful oasis at, to come to a, 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 the, the gutter where all the garbage is dumped. If you really believe there is a heaven, you will not be angry with God for taking your loved one there. You pray that you can be counted worthy to escape the wrath to come. I pray that all the time. I don't want to be here dealing with it. I'd rather God take me today or tomorrow. There's nothing on this planet make me want to stay here. And I love God more. I loved him more than I loved my father. I love God more than I loved my husband. So trust me, God's at the top of my list. And I would much rather be with him than be down here. So in all honesty, I'd be praising God like crazy if I found myself on the other side on the next blink. Now, this is what I want you to think about. Knowing that there are going to be a lot of God's people going. It's going to be over the next three months, you're going to see a lot of deaths. And I don't know if it's going to be from the vaccine, from COVID, or God just through his mercy just going to snatch them up out of their sleep. But there are going to be a lot. There's going to be a major exodus, y'all, during the next three months. That's what I believe. That's the time span I see during the next three months, a major exodus. You're going to come in bedrooms and find people sleep, and you can't wake them up. And some of them won't be sick. That's right. So my question to you is, are you going to believe? Hmm. See, some of you parents, you get angry with God. Because he took your child. 
What you don't know is what's on the other side of that decision. What if your what if your prayer was answered and God allowed your child to live five more years? During that five year period, God may have made a way of escape for them by taking them early because he knew that one of your relatives was going to rape, molest, beat, hurt, do something crazy, and your child would never be the same. They'd be the walking wounded for the rest of their life. They wouldn't reach their fullest potential. They wouldn't be saved. They would be half out of it because they're so mentally and emotionally scarred. You don't know it because you don't see it coming. But there are times when God allows a child to die young because he knows the future for them is very bleak. And he'd rather take them home to be with him and that's their way of escape that God has made. They graduated ahead of their class. See, many saints see death as a curse, even though they say they believe that when we take our last breath, we're going to be with the Lord. We're going to be in heaven. We're going to be with Jesus in eternity. We're going to see all his glory. Some of you act like you don't believe it when people pass on. Everybody has to go through their mourning. That's natural. But why must you be offended in God? Because he chose to take them home rather than spare them. You may not know that some of them may be secretly saying, God, I'm ready whenever you are. And you're praying that they stay for your sake. And they're asking God to take them home for their sake. They've had enough. They're tired. You don't know it. Because they're not going to tell you that. Think about it. All right. I'm going to get off of that. I don't want to be morbid. But I just want to help you see there are times. For example, real quick. The Lord gave me a dream that my husband looked up at me apologetically and he said, baby, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And I went downstairs. I woke up out of that dream and went downstairs and we had us a powwow. And I told him, I said, Milton, I want you to know if you want to be healed, we'll fight this thing together. If you don't want to be healed and you want to go be with the Lord because you're tired, I will not fight against it because I don't live in your body. I don't have that right. Whatever you want, that's what we'll pray together. You know what my husband said? He looked up at me and he said, thank you, baby. So I knew God was showing me what was in my husband's heart. He did not want to stay here any longer. He was ready to go home. All right. So, yes, I mourned for a very long time, but I knew where he was. I wasn't mourning as someone who had no hope. Oh, no. I knew where my baby was. The Lord gave me a vision of him beaming at me saying, baby, look, 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 to let me see how happy he was that he had made it. So, no. Huh. I know where he is. All right. Now, this is what I want you to listen to. There are times when God gets ready to bring judgment, when he gets ready to bring calamity. The calamity is going to feel like a calamity for those who lose their loved ones in the Lord. But, but, it's not a calamity to them. But the real calamity, the real devastation is going to happen to the people who thumb their nose up at God and tell him, talk to the hand. I'm grown. I do what I'm big and bad enough to do. You can't tell me what to, what not to do. 
who to, who not to do, where to, where not to go, how, when, what. No, 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 ain't nobody telling me nothing. Ain't nothing about no thou shalt not. No, I'm doing what I'm big and bad enough to do. I pay my bills. I pull my pants up by my own bootstrap. No. Those are the ones that are going to have a very, very difficult time. And I ask you, if you're there, ask God to change your heart. Ask God to help you repent, even if you don't want to right now. For those of you who don't even believe in God, ask God to strengthen your faith in him. Because it's going to be very devastating to find out if you find out you were wrong. You say, well, what if we're wrong? What? No big deal. It's been worth it, baby. Seeing God all in my life, it's been worth it. But what if you're wrong? I'm going to leave it at that. God bless you to make the right decision. God bless you to stick with God no matter what. Those of you who are God's people, don't get angry with him, y'all. Trust in his mercy. Trust in his love. Trust his heart. When you can't trace his hand, what the heck are you doing? Trust his heart. Amen? All right. And I'm going to end with it as well. When peace like a river extendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. God bless you. Amen.